to the book of John chapter 8, verse 34 to 36. John 8, 34 to 36. And Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is what? A slave of sin, or a servant to sin. And the servant abided not in the house, what? Forever. But the son abided ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, shall be what? When the son makes you free, you shall be what? Free indeed. And today I talk about it takes a sonship desire to be a son. It takes what? It takes a sonship what? To be what? To be a son. The first son I said, let us depart from sin. Hallelujah. But after departing from sin, it's not enough. Amen. A last son I said, a servant can't abide in his house. What? Cannot abide in the house of God forever. A servant cannot do that. And when we saw that, I came and told you, if you decide not to be a servant or a slave, you cannot only be just be a son, you must desire to be a son. You must what? Desire. Ask your neighbor, do you desire? How many of us think you desire to be a son? Not a member of the church, just a son of the ministry. Sons take inheritance. Sons go with the grace. Sons operate like the father. If you see the disciples of Jesus, there was no difference between them and what? And Jesus. Why? Because they are taking the form of sonship. The form of what? Sonship. There's no difference. There's no difference. There's no difference. But when you see a church where there's a difference, it means the members of the church are no longer sons. That's how you can know this is brown, this is black. When we become sons, we look like alike. Tell your neighbor, we shall look alike very soon. We look what? We look alike. Imagine Jesus was needed to be betrayed by a kiss for them to know who Jesus is. It means there was a very deep similarity. Jesus raised sons. But these men needed to desire because they told them, take, leave everything and follow me. And they drop and they followed him. Follow me and I'll make you. Fishers of men. When you come to a church and you can tell who's the pastor, that means that church has a problem already. It means the pastor is very anointed that cannot sit with the people. You know, most people believed there when they came and I told them I'm the caretaker. Most of them believed me. They never knew who's the man of God. Say, I'm the caretaker. Say, hey, you're a caretaker. Yes. Ask your neighbor, are you too proud? Eh? Yes. You go to a place, you can tell who's the deacon. Who's the elder. There's a problem with sonship there. Because people are not being grounded to be sons. They are just being grounded to be members. Members with title. Title does not make a church. Are we clear? Ask your neighbor, can we watch the church together? Ask your neighbor, can you watch the church together? What did they say? They said they are too good. Ask your neighbor, can we cook together? Can we serve together? Can we eat together? Some of us are too anointed to eat with other people. You are eating, you are praying in tongues. We, we are eating. Why are you praying in tongues? We are eating rabasha katalaba. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, we are eating food. May we be alike. Tell me about may we be alike. A church where it has sonship, people look the same. No one feels inferior. No one feels superior. Everyone is what? Because everyone understands the assignment. And the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Do you know why people are not coming to church? Because when you go to any church, you can tell who's rich and who's poor. You can tell who's famous and who's not fair. You can say who's gifted and who's not what. They have not bonded in. May we bond in Jesus' mighty name. How many of us will desire for us to be one people? 
Are you sure? When I don't laugh at church where people magnify titles, positions, education. When you come here, drop your education there. Drop your expertise there. Let us become one body. Are we clear? Even if you're living in a five-bedroom house and I'm living in a, in a, in a bed-sitter, we are the same. We are in the what? We are the same. But it takes a desire. It takes what? This is not something I can tell you. You must desire it yourself. A slave to sin will not and cannot abide forever. But a son abides. A son does what? And what makes a son abides is what? Desire. Let us look at the book of John 8, 35. As we start going deeper. I pray we shall be one church. I pray we shall be one body. When we are one body, there will be no sin. I'm telling you the truth. We will sanctify each other. Are we clear? We will tolerate each other. We shall encourage each other out. One. Someone said, you are a man of God. You are very social. I said, yes. You want me to be what? Unsocial? You don't want me to talk to my people? Actually, why are you talking to them? You should just sit in the office and say, that's your beginning. If you have been raised in that kind of culture, a man of God don't say hi to you. That's our own problem. As here we shall be one in Jesus' mighty name. What does John 8 that verse says? And I what? But what? Why does a son abide forever? Because he has the desire to abide. No son will leave his father. No son will leave his mother. No son. But a slave can leave you. A servant can what? What is desire? A desire is to long or hope. Or express a wish. I long to be in the house of the Lord. I long. I, I desire to be there. I want to be part of the church. I want to be part of them. I don't want to just be coming and going. You are a member. But someone say, I want to be part of them. In my weakness. In my strength. In my challenges. I want to be part of them. I long. I desire. Hallelujah. The prodigal son desired the house of his father. That's why he walked back. May we walk back today in the name of Jesus Christ. And abided, but a slave will never abide. A slave will never desire to come back. A sinner will not want to come back again. But someone who resides in house, it doesn't matter what they did. They say, I'll go back to my father. This is my church. I am being raised here. I'm being groomed here. I'm being corrected here. They are patient with me. They don't know much about me, but they love me. Tell your neighbor, I love you. Yes. A slave will say, I am done with church. I never again am I going to church. Mimi mwenea kanisa kwanza leo ni mewa? Mimi na kanisa tupata? Mimi ni kama maji na nini? Mafuta. Ibadilike leo. Hallelujah. Kwanzia leo, let the church be part of you. Let the church be what? But you must desire to be part of it. Or you'll just be coming and going like a ghost. We don't know where you are. You'll be called, can we visit you? I am busy. Can we see you? Come another year. Hey. Then you start saying, church people are not loving. Yet yourself, you are not loving enough. Luke chapter 15, verse 17 to 20. Look. May we turn around. May we turn around in the name of Jesus Christ. Luke 15, 17 to 20. If you're there, shout a louder, Amen. And when he came to himself, who came to himself? The prodigal son. He said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I am sinned against thee and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired what? Servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was set, he was yet a great far way off. His father saw him and had what? Compassion. And ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. When he saw his father, he ran back. He loved his father. He kissed his father. He said, oh, daddy, I'm sorry, but I'm back. 
It doesn't matter how I've wronged you, but I am back. I know I've been doing my own things, but I am back. That's the character of a son. But every time you are staying away because of guilt, it means you're still a servant in the house of God. You're still a slave. Every time you don't want to come to church because at the, I don't feel like you're still a slave. A slave is the one who lied to you they have malaria they don't have malaria. A slave who lied to you they have stomachache they don't have what? A son, even if they have stomachache, they will wake up and cook. Is it true? Because they are sons. Can we run back? Can we become sons of God? Can we stop being members of the church? Become true sons? The desire made him turn back. Not ashamed. Tell your neighbor, don't be ashamed. Tell your neighbor, walk back. Tell your neighbor, walk back. Amen. And abide in your father's house. But a slave doesn't return. He's always ashamed. And more so walks out. Say, I don't want to be part of that church again. They have wronged me. A son doesn't say that. He comes back and sits with the family. And say, family, I am not happy. Is it true? Can, I, can we fix this? A son will come and say, family, I have done wrong. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. That's what a son does. But a slave, missing. And a badisha number. How many of us have five numbers? Two telecom numbers? Two airtel numbers? One safaricom number? Is there another? We have another airline. We have fiber. Why? Even you have fiber number. We don't know which one to reach you with. Ask your number, neighbor, which number do you can I get you with? Ask your neighbor which number. Some of us live like thieves. We don't know where to get you. You call this one Mteja. You call this one Mteja. You call this one Mteja. Then it tells you, okay, number in Guinea. You don't have that other number. Say, which other number? I have had my 0727 line for about 10 years. I've never changed it. He's only added one number recently. I don't change my number. I think so some people live like this. That's why even Safari, even the telecommunication said you can only have a maximum of two numbers per per telecommunication line. Because some people were buying U lines, 50 bob, 50 bob line, 50 bob. Ask a neighbor, how many lines do you have? What did they tell you? 84. If I had a blessing to give you, which number should I call you with? Ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor, if I had a blessing, if I had $1 million I had to give you, which number should I call you with? What did they say? Some of us have taken... Huh? Even the one, even the people who died, you collect their numbers. Your relative who died, you're using their numbers now. Yeah? You look like an ancestor. Tell anybody, neighbor, stop behaving like an ancestor. They run away. They walk out. They don't abide. Which one are you? Do you think you're a son or a slave? What are you? Ask anybody, what do you think you are? Are you a slave or a son? Oh, a son? Ask anybody, if I wrong you now, what will you do? Will you walk out? Some of us run away. You say the man of God wronged me. I'm not coming back to that church. Hmm? He says, why are you changing? I say, I don't feel like. Just leave me alone. Just leave me what? You are a slave. Slaves will never be satisfied. But sons are always satisfied. It's Psalms 84 verse 10. May we desire to be servants, sons in Jesus' mighty name. That is it. And I was telling my young boys when we were starting ministry, if you can't abide, the work will never go forward. How many of us today make a promise we will stick together? We will work and build this place together. Even if we, are, we don't have anything, we will just be together. Do we agree? Let me see your hand if you're sure. Some of us are not sure. You're lifting your hands because I told you. Tell your neighbor, pinch me if you're sure. <laughs> see the way people look at pinch me, you see. I'll bind you. I will bind you. Psalms 84, verse 10. Let me tell you, a church that is very united can never be defeated. 
Are we clear? And I want us to keep on with this unity. So that when people are coming, they fall under the same you. Unity. They realize our to nikitu kimo. Kimo to kimo. They say what to awili. You imagine you meet a human being with two heads. What will you do? Look at your neighbor and look and imagine them with two heads. Are you not scared? <laughs> Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I see you with two heads. How do you do it to see someone with two heads? There's something you do with your eyes. You start seeing someone like, come on, come on, Kichwambili. So imagine a church with two heads. We don't know where we are going. We are like two people. May we become one person in Jesus' name. Let us eat together. Psalms 84, verse 10. One, two, three, go. Uh huh. Yeah, even if they chase me, I will sit outside there. I'm not leaving the church. I am a son of the ministry. It's better be a door. I will sit at the door. They benedict sit at the door. It's better that way than to be something else. May we make a decision to desire God. So with shame, with guilt, with wickedness, but I rather be the house of the God. With my guilt, let me come to church. Are we clear? With my disappointments, let me come what? Because he will wash away your shame in Jesus' mighty name. God will wash away your pain in Jesus' name. God will transform you from your wickedness in the name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 61 verse 7. Isaiah 61 verse 7. Come to God as you are. Don't separate yourself. Don't stay away. Just come to God as you are. Tell anybody, just come the way you are. Tell anybody, I know you are a smoker like me. Tell anybody, you are an alcoholic. I know you. Tell anybody, I know you. Tell anybody, I know now who you are voting for. Tell anybody, now I know who you are voting for. Hallelujah. I know who you are. Tell everybody I know who you are voting for. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. I didn't say anything. Did I say anything? No, I didn't say did I, did I say anything? I said, I tell everybody I know what you, you heard it. I know that's what you thought about. Tell them I know what you thought about. Tell everybody I know you have alcohol in your house. Tell everybody I know you have alcohol in your house. But tell them about. Neighbor, neighbor, I, God forgives you today. Go just sell it away, okay? Or, or, or throw it. Yes. Come as you are, God will make you. Amen? Don't come looking to be perfect. No. Come with that one dress every Sunday. It doesn't matter. We are not in a fashion show. Are we not doing fashion show competition in church? Some people have stress. They need to buy a new dress every Sunday. You don't kill yourself for anything. Hey. What does Isaiah 50, 61 verse 7 say? Three. One, two, three, go. Three. Who will have double? Who will have double? You will have double for your shame. That's why God said, Come as you are. For your shame, I'll give you double. Continue. Uh -huh. There will be no more confusion in your life. Just abide, just stay. Remain as a son. Don't walk out. Don't be angry. Don't leave the work. Stay with the work. That confusion will go in the name of Jesus Christ. It will go. Amen. Let us continue. Uh -huh. Amen. May you enjoy joy in Jesus' mighty name. Enjoy joy in the name of Jesus Christ. But you must choose to be a son. That joy does not come to members. Are we clear? If this is your church, let us stay. I will fall, but let me raise up. Hallelujah. Let me not walk out and say, Lord, this is my place. I will not miss any Sunday. I will always be there. Even if for those two hours. If I can sit for four hours, I will sit. If I can stay the whole day, I will stay the whole day. It's the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Slaves don't know that because they have no desire in them. Slaves don't know God will give them double for their shame. Slaves do not know for their confusion, God will give them a portion. Slaves do not know they will possess their own land. Slaves do not know joy. They look for happiness. 
Give me joy in my heart. Give me joy in my heart, I pray. Hallelujah. Give me joy. Give me praise. Give me praise to the. Yes. Give me joy. But if you want to see the Sunday school, I'm happy today. So happy. See, there you are singing. You are not happy. Sons abide. Sons do what? But you must desire. Tell your neighbor, come as you are. Tell your neighbor, I love you. Look at another neighbor, tell her, I love you. Look for another neighbor, tell her, I love you. Or I'm a man of Kupenda. Mambo and Nifraisha. Where Murembo? Where Mope? Where Mousi? Where Muzungu? Where Muchina? Hallelujah. What are the characteristics of true sons and daughters? Let us look at characteristics of son, true sons and daughters in the ministry. What are the characters of true sons? This is how you know this person is a member of the church. Not a member of the church. He's a son of the church. A member, you cannot do of this. If you do any of this, they will go. They will go. Number one, they can be rebuked and stay. But a slave cannot be rebuked and stay. As a neighbor, can you be rebuked? Huh? Can you be told no? They can be rebuked and they stay. That's a true character of a son. But a slave, they can never be rebuked. Unampata lihama kakwachia watoto pekeake kwa nyumba. Na meyachua na mfanyikazi. There's a time we've came back. It's Dickens who saved us. We found the lady left. Left with all her package and left. And left the children at home. A true son was there. He left in the middle of the day. One was just transporting things outside the gate, saying that I'm going to the shop. One day, he only left out his own pen there, or maybe charge of the phone. It was in the house. That was the only thing which was remaining. A, a member of the church rebuked them. They start saying, I removed from the service unit. You don't see them on a Sunday. They start coming once. Then one day, you don't see them at all. They start telling you, I'm offended. Do you see how they talk to me? I'm offended. They, because they were rebuked. But a true son, even if they're rebuked, they don't do that. Ask a neighbor, can you be rebuked? What did they say? Luke chapter 4, verse 8. Are you ready? I was not supposed to use this one. But... Before we go there, let us go to Matthew 26, 21, 24. I'll give you the right scripture. I was not supposed to use that one. Luke chapter 4, verse 8. It's not the right one. Let us look first of all, Matthew 26, 21, 24. Are you in the book of Matthew? If you're there, shout a louder, amen. Okay, I'll just read on my side. You just follow me. And as they did what? Eat. He said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall what? Shall be training. And they were exceedingly what? They were sorrowful. But look at this. And they began every one of them saying unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall be training. The son of man goeth as it is written of him. But why unto the man whom the son of man is betrayed? It has been good for that man if he had not been born. It was better for Jesus not to be born. What a curse. He says the one who puts my hand with me in the bowl. He cannot be corrected. He will say I can do what you are doing man of God. Why are you telling me? I am like you. What are you telling me? Even me have a life. Imagine Jesus was putting his hand to pick chapati. Judas' hand was also with the chapati. Both of them are holding the same chapati. Who will give you chapati now? That is the highest form of disrespect. Is it true? The others were saying, is it I, Lord? But Judas was putting his hand when Jesus was talking. 
Jesus said, chapati ni kubwa bana, acha ni acha niende nayo. That's how I say, anyone who tries to challenge me, I already know that one will just try to betray me soon. They have no respect of saying sorry or asking, sir, what do you think? I, yes, sir, I know you have said something painful, but what did you mean? What did you what? What did you mean? Judas never says, is it I? Judas thought about the chapa. He was not listening. Ask your neighbor, what do you say? Neighbor said what? So who will be dip his hand in the same bowl with me to take chapati? You see now you are quiet. That's how people don't know disrespect starts from there. The moment you say you are all equal, even me I'm angry like you. Even me I love eating like you. He didn't laugh the way Jesus said one of you will betray me. But look at this other man. Matthew 6.23. Matthew 16, sorry. 16.23. Look at this other man. Hey. And I want to ask you who can be like this man here today. Matthew 16.23. Let us read together. Are we ready to read? One, two, three, go. Can I call Satan and you remain here? I want to see your hand. And can I call you Satan and you remain? Are you sure? That's a neighbor. Can I call you Satan? What a rebuke. Is it true? That's a painful rebuke. Eh? Get behind me, Satan. Hey. You are an offense to me, Peter. Peter, you are an offense to me. And Peter, the way he was dedicated to God. Hey! You are not mindful of the things of God. You, you are not mindful of the things of God. You are just minding the things of men. And Peter said, ah! I went and came with good news. People were healed. The devil fell like that. And you are calling me Satan. But Jesus, I love you. I stay. Imagine Judas was called Satan. What would have happened? He would have sold the whole account. Two sons can be rebuked and stay. Are we clear? Just I say, people, there's no ministry where you can never be corrected. A true ministry, the man of God will correct you. It's the true test of you. You'll be called and be told, that is wrong. I don't like it. Ask a neighbor, are you ready to be called Satan? What did your neighbor say? Tell your neighbor, if you're not ready, I think you need to review your sonship contract with God. Do you know why churches do the mistake? It's because there are people in church who can never be corrected. Do you know that? There are elders in church who cannot be what? There are people with money who can never be what? I don't believe in that. Money, no money, education, no education, you'll be corrected. There are people who are elderly cannot be rocketed, corrected. That's why Moses really struggled with the elderly people. Moses struggled. Aaron and Miriam. Live by now, Aaron and Miriam. There's one other two guys, Datan and Korah. Hey! Those guys were stubborn. Until Moses said, if you die a natural death, I was not sent. Let the earth open and you die. And he killed them all. The level Moses reached with them, he was like, God, I don't need these guys. Let them not die a natural death. And the Bible says, even their tents and their children, all of them were swallowed by the earth and they died. Because of this, they cannot be rebuked. They were told not to take anything in the land of the enemy. But they went and took. And they came and challenged Datan. And they did not start now. Datan and Korah were the first people telling Moses, you took us away from Egypt. Egypt was more better than here. They were teaching Moses the gospel. And it was Moses who was sent. Moses told them, stop talking like this. Okay, I'll tell God to send you food. After sending food, he says, Now Moses, look, maana. Maana, aina maana. Unatumania maana. Eh? Aina maa. They were complaining. Moses, he went to the mountain. We turned all the gold to calf. Never satisfied. They can never be rebuked. Ask a neighbor, can you be rebuked? What do your neighbor say? It's not easy, eh? 
It's not what? Who has ever been called stupid by a man of God? For me, I've ever been called stupid. I looked at him and said, huh? Man of God, you abused me. He said, I, I did not abuse you. I told you the truth. You are stupid there. Ha! I said, oh, yeah. I said that with the humility. I was ready to think about my stupidity, but it's truly I saw my stupidity later. I said, man of God, you are very correct. I was very stupid in that decision. I said, have you ever been called stupid? See, there you are quiet. Now, this is what people don't want to hear in church. They want to hear, God will bless you. You are anointed of God. You are an angel. You don't do wrong. A true son will be rebuked. If you realize no one is correcting you in church, remember you are poison. Tell your neighbor, if you find no one is correcting you, you remember you are poison. No one wants to associate with a snake. Who can play with a snake? Especially a cobra. Hey, cobra. Cobra. Hi, cobra. You put your hand here. There's something I was watching in, uh, I think it was what? Twitter. It was Twitter or what? There's a man who was playing with a baboon. Okay? He and then the baboon held him. And the man started screaming. I, I really laughed. I forwarded it to my wife. <laughs> I said, this, look at this guy. He was playing with the baboon. Now the baboon has held him. He's crying. <laughs> the baboon lifted him up. Hey! He was playing with it. If you realize no one is correcting you in church, you are poison to the system. I know you don't want to hear that, but I'm just saying the truth. If no one can tell you you are doing the wrong thing, remember everyone has already realized you are a poison to the system. Now they're just looking at you. They say, God bless you. They're not blessing you. Maybe they're spoiling the small God. Oh yeah, you're quiet now. Okay. Who will be open to rebuke from here to from today? Are you sure? Ask me. I'm rebuked. I'm the leader, but I have a father who does not even joke with me. Abraham think. I say, huh? I was thinking. I say, you're not thinking. I, I think I was thinking. <laughs> I say, can you think? I'm asked to think, and I'm thinking. And I'm thinking, like, what am I thinking wrong? I say, sir, sir, am I not thinking? I say, you're not thinking. I say, hi, I am thinking, sir. I say, I think, you're not using your head. I say, ha, ah. now head and brain. Which one am I supposed to use, brain or head? Ah. But I love him so much. I love him because he tells me the truth. He tells me as it is. The Bible says, open rebuke is better than hidden love. Did you hear that? Oh, let me show you what is written. Open what? It's better than what? Yes. Most of us think people who love you will never rebuke you. Check very well. Proverbs 27 verse 5. I don't know what your version will say, but let me see what your version will say. From today, let us be open to rebuke. Are we clear? So that the church can move forward. The man of God should be open to listen to people's opinion. Who has ever had a boss who cannot be told anything? I've been in trouble. Who has ever had a prefect in Mujuaji? Paka unajanga huyu anajua sana. Wacha kaitu. Aya. Proverbs 27 verse 5. What does it say? Let us eat together. One, two, three, go. Wow. So even if I admire you like what? And I cannot tell you the truth. I don't love you. May we be a good church in Jesus' mighty name. Number two, a true sign of a true son and a daughter. They die in faith. They do what? They die in what? Knowing there is a promise. Knowing there is a what? Promise of forgiveness, of a fresh start, of a new name. Every day, know there is a promise of a new name. Are we clear? Every day, know there is a fresh start. You can start afresh. Every day know that God can give you a new name. That God can give you what? A new name. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received their promises, but having seen them afar off. They were persuaded of them, they embraced them, and confessed them, and they were strangers. They are not losing their faith. They are true son who not lose their faith that God has not forgiven them. Tell your neighbor you have been forgiven. Tell your neighbor you have a new name. Tell your neighbor you can do a fresh start today. Yes. 
Today you can start that fresh. Have that faith. Have that faith. That that business will turn around for you. But people who are not sons, they don't believe in that. Psalm 78, 56 to 59. Psalm 78, 56 to 59. Psalm 78, 56 to 59. Yet they tempted and provoked the most high God. And they kept not his testimonies. Why? They had no faith. But turned back and dealt unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like deceitful ball. For they provoked him to anger with their high places. And moved him to jealousy with their graven images. When God had this he was wroth and greatly abhorred his way. Why? They were not walking by faith. How many of us believe God has forgiven them? Do you, are you sure? Are you sure? Every day, sleep, die by faith. Wake up by faith that you have a fresh start. You have a new name. Are we clear? You have a what? And you have a fresh start. But people who are sons, they always think their father still remembers their problem. Can I shock you? God does not remember what you did yesterday. You want to tell me God has a small memory? No. He's your father. Hallelujah. Put your hands up for Jesus. Clap for him. He does not remember. He does not remember. Have faith on that. That's why I walk by faith every day knowing that I am cleansed. I am a new person. I am starting afresh again today. But a son... That's a son. But a slave. And a fikiria tu kitualifanyi ambaya. Nani ya maiko kwa nusimakers list alafu unajua kesho mtanda kutakiwa? Unalalanga jeo usiku? Nakuanga noma, sinio? That's how some of our Christians we are sleeping every day. We are thinking God will punish you. How many of us would love to die today, go to heaven today? You are afraid to die. See, they are afraid to die. What did you do yesterday night that you are afraid to die now? How many of us are ready to die now? Can we call God to come and pick us right now? How many of us think we will enter heaven? See, they are fearing. Where did you sleep, Wani? Can I tell you your problem is what? It's faith. It's what? You don't believe in the masses of God. A son believes in the masses of God. That's why as a father rebuke you, you see, come back to me. I said, Daddy, it's okay. I know I wronged you, but I love you. Hey! I will know you're a proper son. But I rebuke you. I see you run away. I know that one's a fake one. That one's a what? Fake one. That's very fake. Yes. I, I have fought with my biological father. Yeah? There's a day I was sharing with my children. Here. He cut the phone. We're having a family call. Then I said something. <laughs> And he told me, Abraham, who told you to speak on behalf of the family? Ah, I said that. I asked in an innocent way. I didn't know it was something wrong. I said, Where? To repair my name to Cassetto? Shoot! See me, Katwa. To go, Hello? Hello? To Cassa could check out Cassa, William Zamenda. Zame? One of my sisters says, Where Abraham in Lukambi? Watch out what very truthful as in Guinea. Cassama, I didn't know I was doing the wrong thing. So he called me back. I called him back. I did not say that he has not forgiven me. For me, I believe he see my father. Is it true? But if he was not my father and I was not a proper son, I would not have talked to him again. Is it true? I will consider him as very rude. Is it true? When I see you not coming back, it means you don't believe in fatherhood. You don't believe fire. Your father in heaven loves you. Tell your father in heaven loves you. Can we die in faith? From today, we let us die in what? Number three, obey rather than disobey. A true son will either obey rather than what? Will obey rather than what? Obey rather than disobey. I don't agree with my father, but let me obey. But then later, we will discuss that issue. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2 to 5. Obey rather than what? Disobey. Obey. All the time, obey. Obey. Second Timothy, chapter 1, verse 2 to 5. To Timothy, my dearly beloved, what? Son, 
grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God who myself from my forefathers with a poor, pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee. Who is that? Timothy. In my prayers, night and what? Day. Greatly desiring to see you, Timothy. Being mindful of your tears, Timothy. That I may be filled with joy when I call you to remembrance, O oh, Timothy. The unfine faith that is in you, which dwell fast in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that is in you also. Hallelujah. A proper son obeying to the latter. Ask a neighbor, are you obedient? Ask a neighbor, are you obedient? If I tell you to stop the relationship, will you stop it? Ask a neighbor, if the man of God tells you to stop the relationship, will you stop it? I, I, why, are you, why are you looking at me? I say, ask your neighbor. Ask a neighbor, if the man of God tells you to stop it, will you stop it? If, you are, if the man of God tells you to wait for me till the service is over, will you wait? Ask your neighbor, will you wait? What did, what did your neighbor say? Did they say yes? So I try. I do it practical right now. Someone is praying down in tongues. Rabba Shakatala. Bind that spirit. The way they may. Uh. That obedience is not easy. Are we clear? Do you know how he talks about it? Even in the tears of Timothy, he misses Timothy. M Timothy was obedient. He obeyed like his grandmother Lois. He obeyed like his mother Eunice. Oh, Timothy, what an obedient boy. My son. He said, my son, Timothy. Obedience. Obedience makes you a son in the house. We are going evangelism. You have never done evangelism. Just go. You will learn there. Amen? You will what? But look at the people who are not, who are slaves. Second Timothy 4.14. May you receive the spirit of sonship today in Jesus' name. Second Timothy 4.14. Are you ready to read it? One, two, three, go. I, I want you to read it aloud. One, two, three, go. Why? Did what? Mm -hmm. Ask a neighbor, are you Alexander or are you Timothy? What did they say? What did your neighbor say? Say, hi, Alexander. I'm asking, hi, Alexander. Did they say yes? Say, then they say, hi, Timothy. What did they say? Some of us cause harm in the gospel rather than peace. We bring trouble because you are disobedient. Tunambiwa tuende, mwana ya siende. We, wachini pasia yende peke yake. Ana tisumbua sumbua hapa. Is it true? Yeah? At, we care for prayers, it's not there. Even me, I'm going home. Kwa nisina toka tunambia kanisa na yana lala, mimi nienda. You don't know if he was praying the whole night. That's why he did not show up on time. Ask my wife today. I have not slept the whole night. I'm here. I think she was concerned. She told me, why don't you rest? I was listening to Alexander Dowie, one of the God's generals. Obedience. You cannot be a son in the house if you're not obedient. I'm not telling the truth. You will always rebel. Number three. Number four. They keep their words and vows. They do what? They keep their words and what? Someone vowed I will serve the Lord with my money. I will serve the Lord with my talent. I will serve the Lord with all my heart. Most of you have promised me you will help me build the church. Let me ask again. How many of you will help me build this ministry? Are you sure? Let me, let me look for properly. So those who are not lifting their hands, I can forgive them. Are you sure? Okay, let us see here. Acts chapter 4, verse 32 to 37. I will read for the sake of time. May this thing come to you in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Yeah. I have served under people. I know what it means. It's not easy sometimes. Hey. You, take, you need what? You need grace. Acts chapter 4, verse 32 to 37. If you are there, shout aloud that amen. 
And the multitude of them that believed were for what? One heart and one of one. Neither said any of them that all these things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things in what? That's why I said, if you are a true church, no one will know who the difference of us will be the same people. The same what? And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And the great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked as many was were possessors of lands or houses, saw them and brought them in the prices of things that were sold. And they laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was, and was made unto every man according as he has need. And Joseph, and who? Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and bought the money, and laid it on the apostles' feet. Everyone said, they will help the men of God. They will, and everyone brought. They kept their vows. Let me ask again, how many of us will help us build this ministry? Are you sure? Are you sure? Now look at the opposite. The same people. Acts chapter 4, verse 5. Sorry, Acts chapter 5. Verse 1. The next chapter, it shows us some other people. Acts chapter 5, verse 1 to 10. If you're there, shout a louder, amen. But a certain man named what? With who? Saul what? And he kept back part of the price. His wife also being private to it. And bought a certain part and laid it in the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why a certain feed thy heart with a light to with a heart to light to the Holy Ghost and to keep back the part of the price of the land? Why it remained? Was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? And thou hast not lied unto men, but who? Unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And him. <laughs> And great fear came upon all them that had these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of how many hours? Three hours after then, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered, At what? Tell me whether you saw the land for so much. She said, Yeah, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that you have agreed? together to tempt the spirit of the Lord. Behold, the feet of them that which were buried by the husband are at the door. And she carried thee out. She fell down, set away at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth and buried her by the husband. Simplicity. They never kept their vow. How many have said when you make God make me a millionaire, I'll give you one million. How many have said that so far? How many have said, when God, you bless me with my first offering, my first salary, I'll give it to you. My first income. You did not keep it. You are playing in the repertoire of Ananias and Sapphira. True sons keep their word. They keep their vows to God. They say, I will never leave. They will never leave. Are we clear? I will help you build a place. They will stay and build it, no matter what happens. But this ones that go, they will never settle down. Because one thing they did, they broke a vow. The chapter 4, other people were giving. Is it true? No one lied. Joseph, the son of consolation, named Barnabas, gave. But Ananias and Sapphira, husband and wife, lied to Peter. Will you say God is unjust? No. The problem is this. They never kept their vow. It's very dangerous. That's why I am very careful to promise people things. If I promise you something, I want it to be done to get down with it. Don't promise someone, especially the work of God, saying, Lord, if you bless me with salary, I'll be giving you tithe of 20%. God is looking at you. Yeah, he's looking at you. Say, you, are you sure what you're saying? Some of you said, when God will bless me, I will never fail pay my tithe. How comes you see don't pay your tithe? You are playing on a dangerous count. Anyway, they are looking at me as if you fear. Have you vowed and you have not committed it? 
May you go fix it. Hallelujah. You say, Mungu kinita nita kutumikia maisha angu milole. Nikipora tu kanisa nzuri, nita kutumikia. Why you not serving? Dangerous vows. God can paralyze your business because of that thing. Yes. Wow. I love that you are quiet. How many of us from today will try to keep our vows and promises to God? Are you sure? Are you sure? You remember you're not doing for the man of God. You're doing for what? Number five. I think I'll conclude from here. I'll continue the next ones in the second service. They respond to the desires of their father. Their spiritual father. Even if it is dangerous. They respond to the what? The desires of their spiritual father. I'm your spiritual father. What do I desire? Let us walk in love. Let us what? And let us build the work. Let us love each other. Let us not gossip each other. Let us not fight each other. Let us love each other. Let us show love to each other. Let us take care of each other. Let us visit each other. Let us bless each other. That's my heart desire. Let us come build the work. Let us come build the work together. But slaves don't care about the desire of the father. They always say they are busy. They are busy. Well, you don't understand what they are busy about. They are only available when they want something. When there is nothing they want, they are not available. Okay, let us look at this. Second Samuel 23, verse 15 to 16. Are you learning something today? That's why you must desire to be a son to do these things. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you just shout a louder, amen. If you just shout a louder, amen. Are you there? Second Samuel 23. Verse 15 to 16. Are we there? What does it say? If you are there, verse 15, can we together? One, two, three, go. Hey, hey, we are not in it together. One, two, three, go. Mm. I look at verse 16. <laughs> One, two, three, go. Enemies come for me. They came with their swords. I said, where are you coming from? You said you wanted water. I brought for you water. Hey! Henry only says he can die for me. Or it has changed already. One day I was with him. One woman touched me. It was a woman, I think. He cut it and threw him. Come here, Henry, we are not fighting. Eh? We are not fighting. He said, why is he touching you? Why is he touching you? Why is he touching me? I said, don't, don't, don't worry. It's okay. It's okay. The woman looked at Henry like this. He just kept quiet to say, hey, um, you must There are some people. That's the, what's my desire? The, David only wanted water. Three men entered the enemy's camp, took water, came back. They fought with us to get water. Water! Ask your neighbor, how far can you go with this ministry? How far can you sacrifice? Any child that is great is people who can sacrifice for the work. Can die for the work. I was telling you, George, this man, they have been young and we have done all this. Now you guys are joining. Make sure you can die for the work. Die for it. No matter the hour. They will work at night in the morning they're here. Work 24 o'clock. They are still there available, sir. Do you want anything? Do you want anything, sir? I say, ah, what do I want? Hmm. I want nothing. David asked for water. Three men entered the enemy's camp. Took the water, came back. Those days, people never used to fight with guns. It's swords. machete. Yeah. 
That's her son. But look, this other guy is here. Paul talking about them. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 19 to 20. That's why I don't understand when people leave the man of God because of a problem. Because of. So, yeah, I don't understand. What's your problem with you? Yet you can see you're being taken in the right direction. That is a man, first of all, before you became a man of God. Are we clear? He may have insufficiency, but cover him up. Protect him. Work with him to be the work. Because the work, especially, is not for him, it's for us. Is it true? Wow. I think I should tell anybody I need a pig. No, I don't want a pig. It's okay. If God bring for me a piggy, I wouldn't know what to do with it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I will first Timothy chapter 1, verse 19 to 20. I know you're keeping quiet, you're wondering, eh? What does it say? One, two, three, go. Uh huh. They have what? Put it to what? Put it away. And they're having a what? A shipwreck. What did they do? Continue. Verse 20. Mm -hmm. Alexander again. This Alexander guy was too bad trouble. Eh? Hymenaeus and what? Whom I have what? Yeah. 